So the recordings in progress don't make any noise. With your voice, it can be identified as a stupid promise and consideration. Yes. Hey, even if you say some really what and great, uh, privacy law say I can't use it. Today. Okay. Uh, and of course, there's something really stupid. I wouldn't want to use the video because it comes back and all that. <laughs> okay. Uh, and if you're disruptive and obnoxious, it's even worse than being stupid. Uh, and you know, nobody looks all that disruptive or obnoxious. Okay. So I don't think we got a problem with that. Okay. So anyhow, we got the up there. Some people are. Sometimes it's fun to deal with that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the RDT. Well, R of T equals X, and that's the derivative with respect to T. Well, that's right. I think it rules for derivatives. If they, if they apply, and they apply to I's and J's. Because I's and J's are just constants, they're vectors. Uh, and we'll see what that means in a minute. So that's the derivative with respect to T. And even though it's intuitive and nobody actually wrote it out like this, you do want to know what the rules are. And you pretty much do. And you want to be able to write it out like this if I ask you to, because when we get into this course, there are things we're going to need to write out. Okay. So right now, I wouldn't, I didn't want, even want you to write this out because I wanted you to do it quickly and make sure you can do it. And I think everybody got it. Um, but let's make sure either got it or was about to get it. So there it is. Okay. Anybody need any more explanation? All right. Now, I'm going to pause for a second. Oh, crap. I didn't record any of that. I saw this thing at the top. I thought I was recording. Anyhow, uh, if this is the case, then we can write out in detail what DRDT is, is following the rules for derivatives. The derivative of a sum is a sum of the derivatives. There we go. Okay. And then the derivative of cosine, derivative of sine, everybody's got that. So you get negative sine pi plus cosine pj. What's the i and the j? i is a unit vector in the x direction, j is a unit vector in the y direction, vector magnitude one. Okay. So these are the unit vectors. So how do we use unit vectors? Well, Take two i minus three j. And we can write a couple of i vectors there and have these things in the other room. There's an i, there's an i. You put them together, you get two i, as you would expect. And then you got negative j's, little vectors, reverse direction, and you do the negative. And you got three negative j's here, so they negative three j. So if you do two i minus three j, that's like you start here, you do two i. And then you do minus 3j. Minus 3j doesn't have to start here. It can start here. The vector can start at any point. The vector has only the function of moving things, of taking the initial point and moving it to a terminal point. So if you do a 2i and a negative 3j, you can just put across a hypotenuse of this triangle, and there it is. There's two the vector two i minus three j. So now I've asked that you evaluate the R of t vector for t equals zero pi over two pi and two pi. Come on, you're supposed to stop the recording. Okay. Now. The uh, sines and cosines of these angles are totally straightforward. Okay. Uh, and we want to do this without using a calculator. I give you an angle like 78 94ths of pi. 
Well, first you're going to reduce some of the data over 94, but still, you're going to have to use your calculator. You don't even know exactly what that is. Okay. Calculator is going to give you a bunch of decimal places, but if it's pi over 2, pi 3, pi over 2, 2 pi, you got to know it. And that means what you got to know. And kind of the first thing you got to know in this course, and really should know from what you've done before, is a circular model of the sine and cosine. So there's a reasonably good circle, a little flat on top. It's the unit circle at a radius of one centered at the origin. I didn't write center at the origin, but that's part of the definition. Yeah, we are recording that. Okay, so this point on the circle corresponds to zero or two pi. Then this point corresponds to pi over two, this point to pi, this point to three pi over two in radians. Uh, you, you all know that you do calculus in radians. Okay, you do calculus in degrees, then you got a chain rule problem every time you turn your head and everything is really, really messy. So if we write an angle without units on it, that angle is in radians. That's the only unit that's the default unit in mathematics. Degrees is not. Now degrees is really handy because you know visualize the 360 degrees. So you didn't divide it up into 90s and 45s and 30s and 60s, 15s, 75s, whatever. Okay. Uh, so there's nothing wrong with degrees, but you can't do calculus with it. Okay. Uh, so those are the angles. Now, for any point on the circle, if this is the angle theta, then this x coordinate is. Cosine theta and the y coordinate is sine theta. So if the angle is zero, that means you're here. What's your x coordinate at this point? What's your y coordinate at this point? Well, the x coordinate is one and the y coordinate is zero. So it's one pi. Plus zero j. Because again, the cosine of zero is zero. If t is zero, you're doing the cosine of zero, you mean cosine of zero radian. You go to the picture on your unit circle and you don't have to memorize what the cosine of zero or the sine of 90 degrees or pi over two is. It's all right there. Okay. So you just keep a unit circle in your head. And until you get it in your head, keep drawing the dang thing. Okay. Okay, so there for pi over two. Well, pi over two means you're here. What's the x coordinate? What's the y coordinate? Well, the x coordinate is zero, the y coordinate is one. So it's zero i plus one j. Then you go around the rest of the circle, you're going to have negative one i plus zero j and pi because the x coordinate at this point is negative one and the y coordinate at this point is negative one. So you're going to get in, in the y coordinates that, uh, yeah, what? X coordinate zero, the y coordinate is negative one. And then you got, again, at two pi, you got one i plus zero j. 
And now you can keep going around this and I call them get co-terminal angles. Okay. Uh, you could go to five pi over two, three pi, seven pi over two, four pi. You just keep going around. You keep going around, it gives you oscillatory behavior like end one. And you did that in differential equations. Um, okay. So there we have it. So now we have four R vectors. Actually, five if you include this one, but this is the same as this one. So draw those five R vectors, four, yeah, whatever, four or five, your choice. Okay, so remember I said each vector rooted here. I didn't write it down, so I might not have a And you've everybody's shown all the vectors. Okay, I got one square here, which is a good square. And it's what you get if you add them all. You end up back where you started from, don't you? And that's worth knowing. Okay, so what's the bad thing at all? Uh, so here's R of. Zero. Here's R of pi over two. Here's R of pi. Here's R of three pi over two. I don't have to do this one again and just say that this is equal to R of two pi. Okay. Now, of course, you get the idea that the R vector as T increases is somehow tracing out a path. Okay. That makes sense. So, what's the path from here to here going to look like? What's a path from here to here going to look like, and so forth? So, show me a path from here to here to here to here. I don't care if it's the right path or the wrong path. We'll see what the right path is. If you know what the right path is, go ahead and write it down and say why. But at least give me a path. Okay, well, so we find the unit circle to be suggested. The sun, you wrote the circle, which turns out to be the path you were directing this. Some you did straight lines. That's a any path. Okay, so we've got two possible answers to this. Thought one would be straight line, diamond shape. And that's an interesting path. You're going to have fun figuring out how to parameterize that path. Okay. Uh -huh. And then we have this path, which turns out to be the one that matches this function. But I didn't ask you to do the one that matches this function, I asked you for any path. You could have drawn all kinds of things. Okay. Okay, now I'm saying the path is a circle and I can prove it. Most of you drew circles. Can you prove it? Okay. Now I don't remember the thing was recording, the button is just all kinds of bizarre. 
you press it once and sometimes it starts recording, sometimes it doesn't. And it's really easy to confuse me. Okay, and it's very successful at that. But anyhow, uh, so I might have already said this, but why is it one? Well, somebody said because of the agreement identity. Okay, that's true. The agreement identity says that the cosine squared plus the sine squared is one. So RT is always on the circle, but that's not really, that, that, that's why. And for an engineer, that's a pretty good explanation, but engineers don't always connect all the dots, okay? It's really, I think, a good idea, uh, even if you're in a field where you won't ever have time to connect all the dots to connect the simple ones, okay? And that, that's one reason I'm critical of engineering, because like one person said, well, in statics class, the only way we use dot product is on a calculator. And then you're not doing mathematics, you're doing engineering. So you got to know the mathematics behind it. That's why he takes these courses. And that's why we have the calculus courses we're supposed to teach that. And calculus courses are supposed to reinforce it. So by the time you get here, we don't have to stop and talk about this, although I don't mind. <laughs> okay, I want everybody to be on a level playing field. It's really quite easy. Connecting it to the law of cosines, which is probably also in the bigger calculator. Uh, it's a little bit of a step, but not a bad one. But we're not going to do that. Okay. Uh, so anyhow, the dot product of cosine ti plus sine tj with cosine ti plus sine tj, that's going to be hard to read, but I'm going to leave myself room. One at least one of them to be legible. Multiply the I components, and multiply the J components. And it's the square root of okay. And that comes out square root of cosine squared plus a sine squared. Everybody needs to know the definition of dot product. You're going to see it in this course. Every book actually knows that mathematics teaches all over the place. People come into the course totally unprepared for some things and quite well prepared for others. Okay. And everybody's in that situation. If you don't know the definition of dot product, you're going to learn it. You're going to have to apply it in this course. Okay. And if you take linear algebra, you're going to have to understand what an inner product is. The dot product is a good place to start, and it's not something to do with dot product. Okay. In engineering, like I say, there's a whole lot of stuff to do to learn how to use the tools. You don't necessarily learn what they need. I know that's true. That Really top notch engineering schools. Not the very top, but right next to the top. Uh, once you were a lot of people in that. Okay, so anyhow, A dot B. So A dot B is A1, B1 plus A2, B2. Which is also a magnitude of A times magnitude of B times a cosine of the angle between them. Picture that goes with that is if this is A, this is the theta is the angle between them. Take the length of A, multiply by the length of B, multiply that by cosine theta, there's your dot product. And it's handy for calculating the angle between two vectors. 
even if the vector is in three dimensional space, even if it's in four dimensional space, even if it's in n dimensional space, the dot product is just component wise, you match them up, multiply the components, and you add them up the same as you did there. You don't have to remember that. You can really write it out when you need to do it. I'm just telling you. It's really fundamental and foundational. Uh, so there we have it. This is all the reason why this thing lies in the unit circle, because the magnitude of R is the length of R. If R is rooted here, and if its magnitude is one, then R has to be somewhere on the unit circle. Now we could go so far as to prove that when you move around here, you move continuously around the circle as T increases. I'm just going to ask you to believe it. It's a little more mathematically rigorous than we really need to be in this course, although it would be good if we could be. Too much to do. We're not going to be able to go to that level of rigor, especially after people have have left their mathematics largely under the shadow of COVID. So we'll get the high points, leave the other points for you to fill out. But these are the points that we have to understand. Now, we're going to get to it. The book is going to do it. You're going to have problems doing it, but you've seen it. And this should correct you well for when you have to do it. Okay. Um, the next thing we want to do with this is we want to see what this BRDT vector is. So let's fill in a couple of points. Let's do pi over four. It will. I'm going to say this is approximately point seven i plus point seven j. Okay, because horse circle in the orbit. Here's pi over four. Here's a cosine, here's the sine. By symmetry, these are equal. And the sum of their squares has to be one. What's two equal numbers, the sum of whose squares equals one? One over the square root of two. Square root of two over two. Whichever way you want to write it. Okay? So by symmetry, I'm not going to write it out. These are your fundamental angles. If you don't know how to derive the sine and cosine of 30 degrees, 60 degrees, and 45 degrees by triangles, look it up. Make sure you understand it because it helps you understand circle, helps you understand these paths. Okay. Very important to understand those things. And also that approximate. Actually, like 0.707. Right? So I just rounded off to 0.7, close enough for a picture, not close enough to put a rocket on the moon in the engineer. Would that be a good project? Of course, somebody would do that. <laughs> okay. Uh, Got to use some static. So you move. that's everything we need to know. That and all the stuff we did with gravitation last semester, and we'll do again in physics. With electrostatics. <laughs> okay. Uh, and there's a lot more to than that. You got to get into the ground mechanics and that gets into advanced engineering mathematics and beyond. Okay. Which most people don't do. Uh, okay. Well, so back to, back to the rule a little here. There we go. Okay. Approximately 0.7i plus 0.7j. And at 3 pi over 4. We get approximately 
negative point seven I plus point seven K, but that three five over four is over here, the same symmetry argument tells us that this distance is equal to this distance, and they add up to one. They're, 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 some of their squares is one. Okay. I think I said it was right. But there it is. Okay. So you know, let's just look at this point on the circle. So let's go to my better circle here. Come up with a different color. Okay. This point is approximately. Point seven I plus point seven J might be hard to read that. That's what it says. And you know, you, you, you really need to know exactly what it is and how to derive the fact that it's one over the square root of two I plus one over the square root of two J. Okay. And I, I, as I say, man, I'm not sure about that seven or seven. There's one over the square root of two and one over one point four one four, which is F still a little bigger than seven. Okay. I think we're at about the same circle. And the natural log of two is 0. 0.69. So I always have to check myself on that. Okay. Uh, so there we have it. <coughs> so my question is now what's DRVT? So let's go over here and do it. Just from zero to pi, because the rest is going to be obvious. What are your values of dr dt? Okay, now everybody's on track with this. Uh, your dr dt is negative sine t i plus cosine t j. Okay, so this is going to be. Uh, all the way to the one, one J. This is going to be negative point seven I plus point seven J. This is going to be negative J. This is going to be. Negative 0.79 minus 0.7 J. And I will put that into J. And this is going to be all right, it is negative 1 J. It's written kind of small, but everybody's at least got this. I'm convinced everybody else can finish the table. Everybody can finish the table. Okay. And again, you want to know what the sine of pi over four is. Here's pi over four, here's the sine, right? Okay. Okay. So you don't have to be remembering what the sine of pi over four is. If you want the sine of pi over four, you draw this and put pi over four here. You project over here. Here's the sine of pi over four. You can visualize the 45 degree angles. You know that's going to be the square root of two over two. And you know that's about 0.7. Okay. You don't go by memory, you go by picture. Because a picture will stay with you. You can use it a few times and then continue to use it. Yeah, we're recording. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to take this vector for reasons that might or might not be clear to you. This negative 0.7i plus 0.7j. Actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do the 1j. Okay. No, I don't know how to do 1j. I'm going to do for pi over 2. I got negative j, right? 
So at the pot over two point here, I've got R prime equals negative J. That negative J, it's a little big. It's got to be the same size as the radius of the circle. So maybe that exaggerated it. My arm was in the way. That's my excuse. Okay. Really should have ended that right about here. Okay. I think the point of error will move it over a little bit if you're right. Does that make sense? And you might not know why, but I go to the R equals. Well, to the R of pi over two, okay? So now my picture, I have R of pi over two. And to be completely wrong, I probably should write that as R prime of pi over two. And here's my R of pi over two. Now, just one side comment. Would it make sense to have this vector and this vector? Well, the answer is no, because the vectors don't measure the same thing. What's this vector measure? It measures the displacement, right? What's this vector measure? It measures a rate of change of displacement because the derivative is a rate of change. You don't have a displacement to a rate of change of displacement, a rate of change of position. Okay. Anybody want to tell me what you call a rate of change of displacement? Okay, so yeah, we're taking this picture, bring it over here. Um, and I tried to draw a circle, and then I went to golf analogy with Jack the City. Needed a good shot. Got back to here. Something went a little wrong. Figured out six adjustments to make between here and there. Got a perfect shot. Okay. Golfers can't imagine that. Okay. You got to be golfer here. That was good golf. Back in the days, that's so funny. That big golf. Okay. Between the best amateurs in any pro. There's a big gulf between me and Leonardo da Vinci. Because Leonardo da Vinci would have gotten around to here and figured out how not to make that thing lopsided. That's my whole point. Okay. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to do. Sometimes I pull it off. I kind of pulled off a good one here. This one didn't work. Anyhow, here we go. Here's our circle. And I'm just taking this picture over here. Where we have our r of pi over two, which is this pi old j. Okay. And my that's i not right here. And this is negative today, right? And now, as we said before, I don't know that the recording is off, but I didn't think it was, but we'll see. Uh, this is a position. This is a rate of change of position. Rate of change of position is a velocity. If T stands for time, no, T doesn't always stand for time. But if we let T stand for time, it's a good way to visualize what's going on here. If T stands for time, then R prime, of course, is a derivative with respect to time, the derivative we've been using. Uh, we wouldn't add this vector to this vector, which means I probably ought to use different colors in here. But let's put that out there. Should have something. Well, let's help me this. Okay. That measure can't be added to this because it measures the rate of change or whatever this one measures. You don't add a position to a velocity. Okay. You might multiply the velocity by time and add that to position, but 
That's a different thing. Okay, so there's a picture now. What I'd like you to do real quickly. Uh, you have your R pi or four equals whatever, right? And your R of three pi over four. So at this point, draw your R prime vector for pi over four. At this point, draw your R prime vector for three pi over four. First of all, what is R prime of pi over four? Well, we calculated that over here, right? Approximately. Okay. Well, negative seven i plus point negative point seven i plus point seven j. Right here is negative point seven i, and up here is point seven j. And when we do negative point seven i plus point seven j. You get this. Make sense? So you want to construct the vectors carefully and step by step. In engineering, you got to do things by steps. Okay. In mathematics, it's good to do things by steps. Good to see the overall picture, too. Uh, but okay, you get pi over four. Once that's figured out, to figure out what r prime is of pi over four. It's a good idea to write it out, and I'm not really giving you time to write it out. Okay, there it is, and that means we go 0.7i this way, and then 0.7i this way. That takes us from here to here, and there's our vector. Okay, so make sure you understand those steps. And then here, same thing. You got negative 0.7 i minus 0.7 j, and that's your r prime. So three pi over four, I didn't make myself enough room to really label that well. But you start to get a picture, okay? And if you extend the picture, if you look at the pattern, of what's going on here, you see that you're going to get this, and you're going to get this, and you're going to get this, and you're going to get this. And you're going to get okay. So it's a bunch of vectors that really, you know, invoke motion around the circle. Okay. Another thing, if you draw this accurately, and I actually did that one fairly accurately, surprisingly, this vector looks like it's going to be tangent to that circle. Okay, so are the R prime vectors tangent to the circle? Well, Let's say here's an R vector. Here's R of T, here's R prime of T. Now, 
Now, what's the expression for R of T? Cosine T plus I, cosine PI plus sine PJ. What's the dot product with? With R prime of T. What's R prime of T? It's negative sine pi plus cosine tj. Okay. So calculate that dot product for me. Okay. okay. Everybody's good here. Everybody's even got it. We're going to get it. Okay. No. What's this dot product? It's the i component times the i component, which is cosine t times negative sine t, there's no i. The i's disappear. Remember here, I don't have any i's on the definition. And of course, you got to see the definition. And you're also, you know, I think what I'm going to ask you to do for homework, I'm just getting oriented to the web assigned, is read through chapter 12 and see how much of it I just covered. Quite a bit, but not everything. But give you some orientation, some idea that this chapter 12 isn't too hard. You got to get a few things right that from what you do. Uh, you spend the time, it's going to take you some time, but do it. Okay, then it's going to be plus negative sine t times cosine t. Uh oh, that's another negative sine t. It's a positive sine t. So it's cosine t sine t minus sine t cosine t, which is recognized as zero. And what does this tell you about this picture? It tells you that the cosine of this angle is zero because neither the magnitude of the R of T or the R prime of T vector is zero. They both have magnitude one. So this isn't zero, this isn't zero. Cosine theta is zero, which means the angle between the two vectors is what? <coughs> Okay, so there it is. The dot product is zero. So if this angle is theta, so that is power to a 90 degrees, right? Now what? What does it mean that this? Is that a right angle to this? It means that this is tangent to the circle because that's one of the properties of circles that probably didn't get covered in geometry unless you had it before COVID. Okay? Probably was. But nobody was asked to make anything stick during COVID. So you can forget that. But people usually know that. So. It is 90 degrees. And it follows that R prime is tangent to the path. <coughs> okay. I might hold you over just a couple of minutes and we're not going to not do too much. Well. There's something we can really do here. Okay, so now let's say that R of T. Cosine of t squared times i plus the sine of t squared times j. Okay. Well, then, I don't want to do off one yet. No, I'm not going to take time to look at what you're doing here because we're time. But what are you going to write out for the magnitude of R of T? Think. What's the magnitude of a vector? It's 
square root of that power. Now you got to fill in the details, write out dot product of this and this. You're going to have a cosine squared times a cosine squared, which is a square of the cosine of t squared, right? And the square of the sine of t squared. And what's that? It's one. Because it's a cosine squared of something plus a sine squared of the same thing. It's a different thing than what it was over here, but it's still the sum of the cosine squared and the sine squared of the same quantity. So half is a unit circle. Okay. Now what's our prime of T? You take the derivative, use the chain rule, which you ought to be very familiar with in differential equations. Okay, put a big pressure in your mind, and you get 2t. Okay. Derivative of cosine of t squared, the unit function of t squared, derivative is 2t, and then it's times the negative sine of t squared. Okay, and you're going to get a 2t here times the cosine of t squared. It's going to be 2t times the negative okay just now it looks a whole lot like the other like what's the magnitude of our prime Well, the magnitude of what's inside the parentheses here is one. If you dot it with itself, you're still going to get a sine squared plus a cosine squared, right? You're going to have a negative sine times a negative sine, which is still a sine squared, right? And you're going to have that two t. Well, the magnitude of r prime It's just two t times the magnitude of this. And you can work that out and do the dot product, take the square root. You're going to get a 4t squared under the square. You're going to get a one, so you're just going to have a 4t squared. Square is going to be 2t. But intuitively, 2t times this. What does this mean for the motion around the circle? Now, first place, magnitude of our prime is 2t. So the more time, the faster it's moving, right? The bigger the R's are going to be. So instead of having a vector this length there, same length all the way around, the vectors are going to get longer and longer as you go, which means you're going faster and faster. Okay. So now, well, now we're two minutes old, so now I don't have any more board space. I probably ought to stop it. I'll just comment. Okay. In this case, we're going around the circle. You can take another derivative. You can do an R double prime. Now, I'm just going to show you where R double prime is. It's really easy to show this. You just do the derivative and look, and our double prime is going to be the negative of R. Okay. Like you do the derivative of where is it negative sine t i plus cosine tj. Derivative of that's going to be negative cosine, negative sine here, which is the negative of what you started with. Okay. So if what you started with is out here, what you get after two derivatives is in here. Now, the second derivative of position is acceleration. There's a centrifugal acceleration. You derive v squared over r from this. Okay, physics students will know that. You've done dynamics, you probably know it. You've done dynamics? Yeah, okay. So, uh, yeah, 
So this is going to work in well with some that. Um, and probably take it take a little deeper because dynamics isn't based on this course. Okay. Uh, so what we have then is in order centripetal acceleration. In the case where you have the T squared, where you're going faster and faster, or your centripetal acceleration is going to get bigger and bigger. It's going to kill you after a while if you run that soon. Okay. Uh, it just did you apart. Okay, uh, so don't be on that surface. Um, the other thing is, you're speeding up in this direction, and you're being accelerated in this direction. You've got two accelerations. You've got a centripetal acceleration and a tangential acceleration. So on that circle, Out. Go off my reflection. Okay, on well, that circle, you have acceleration vectors. They kind of go like this. Okay, you have a component tangent, component toward the center. 